Okay, so if you're an Office 365 user, which is what I have pulled up on the screen, I've just gone to office.com, and you're looking to gather data from users and put it into Excel, and we're gonna open up Excel as we go through this. You just wanna give them a simple user interface, validate the data before it comes in. There's a built-in way to do this. And from this workbook, let's go ahead and change the name. We're gonna say survey results. Now we have a blank workbook here, only one worksheet, it's called sheet one, but we want to insert a form. So if you go into Excel online and go to the insert menu and you don't see the option for forms, you're probably not an Office 365 subscriber. If you want more information on it, just go down into the description field. I have an affiliate link that will bring you uh, right there so you can sign up. So this is going to start up Microsoft Forms and it's going to be linked to that Excel spreadsheet we were looking at just by virtue of you starting it from that file. You could also start forms from OneDrive or SharePoint if you wanted to, but since it's going to be linked to this spreadsheet, I think it's more intuitive to start it from there. And you see it's already built out this table. Okay, it's made a new worksheet called Form 1. And for every respondent, it's going to record their start time of the survey com and completion time email if they're in your organization and name uh, automatically. So let's put those fields in. But let's go over to the form. And this is what you're going to end up sending out. Users are going to fill it out, submit it back, and the data is going to flow back into the spreadsheet. Okay, so we'll go back to Microsoft Forms. We're going to change the name of the survey first because this is just a survey. It's not the survey results. Those go into Excel. And then the next thing that you wanna do is just add a question. So there's several different question types and we're going to go over enough of these for you to get a feel for what they're trying to do. And let's say the first thing that you wanna do is gather names. So if you're sending this outside of your organization, you're not gonna have their names. So let's ask for a first name. And you do need to look at these different options so a name's going to be a short answer. Don't worry about this, but if you did need it, you click it, it gives them just a bigger box. But let's act like you do need their name. So if you make this question required, okay, and I'll come over and preview it, it's going to give it a little red asterisk, and the definition of that red asterisk is that it's required. So we'll click the back button, go back to the survey. Some other options. You can restrict what the users enter into this field but these are mostly to validate numerical values and that doesn't really pertain to what we're doing right now. So let's leave those alone. Come back, add another question. You're going to want to ask their last name and Forms happens to use AI here to figure out that that's probably what you want. And let's not bother with the middle names. We won't do add all. Let's just left click on last name and then left click on add selected. So you have two fields now. You're not really gonna send this out yet because you're not really asking for anything except names. So the next thing that we wanna ask for, it's suggested middle name again, but I don't want that. We just want a text field because all I want is an email address. But let's not require that one because some people might not feel comfortable giving that out. And what that does, it, it increases the chance of this getting sent back because someone can just skip that question. And now let's add another question and we're going to ask people, how was their service? And we'll act like this is a customer service survey. We'll say, how was our service? This defaults to a star system that you can do. You can control the amount of levels and you can control if it's stars or numbers. All right, we'll just leave it as stars for now. Probably want to make that required because that's the whole point of sending this out. So we have that one done. We'll see how that flows in the spreadsheet in just a second. Let's add a few more questions so you can see some other options. We wanna know when we can contact these people. So if they give us two stars and we wanna find out why, we want to have someone get on the phone, but we're going to send this out to hundreds of people. So let's just give them a few options on how to respond. So someone can say, hold on here, let's say, uh, when can we contact you? We're going to just give um, daytime, nighttime, and we're going to add an other option. But I want them to click one of these and only one of these because I want to get most of them back with one of two options. And then I can have someone do the calls during the day and someone during the night. 
and we can sort the list when it comes back. So leave multiple answers off. We're not going to require this one because someone doesn't want to fill it out. We still want to contact them. So that one's done. We'll just do a few more question types here. There is a date field and this date field is important. Let's say what day should we call you? And so I'm going to preview this. It makes it easier on the user to input it. When they left click on this field, they get a calendar date picker where they just left click on the date. And what that prevents is someone typing in uh, February 9th with a TH on the end of the 9, 2019, and it's not a valid date. The spreadsheet would accept it, but you can't sort by that because Excel wouldn't know that that was a date. But this type of date field will only accept valid dates. So that can be really handy when you're working with the data. Let's go back. There's a couple of other types here. They're going to return mostly numeric values. I just wanted you to see that they're available, but I don't think that we really need to go over them because they're going to behave in a similar way when they get into the spreadsheet. So let's act like we're ready to send this out. So first we're going to go to the three dots before the share menu for some settings. So go down to settings. And for this one, let's act like anyone can respond. So what that does is instead of this survey being behind a username and password wall, it just makes it accessible to anyone with the link. In a minute here, we're gonna show you how to distribute that link. Let's uh, open up the survey right away. So I have a check mark and accept responses. And you can schedule one to start and end it. So if it's only supposed to last one day, but you might not get to it for a while, you can set an end date on it. You can do your own little thank you message and you can control some other things as well but this is the meat and potatoes of it these are the important parts so we've gone through the settings let's left click on share now and we already chose that anyone with the link can respond and this is the link here so you can left click in it and copy it or you can just use this button I guess make your life a little bit easier and that's showing because the link option is highlighted here if you had that link, you could email it to someone, you could send them a Skype message, do whatever you want with it. But there are some other interesting ways to send this out. You can get a QR code. You could download this, you could put it on your website for someone to just scan with their phone, or you could print this out, maybe a hang it on your bulletin board at your shop to get a survey results. But you can also embed it. So this would be the code that you would put on your website. You would embed this in a little window in your website. And if I click preview, this is what the users would see on your page. It would be surrounded by perhaps the menu and the image of your website, but this would just be embedded right there. And if you look at the mobile preview, this is what it would look like in mobile. Okay, let's go back into share. And then there's the option to just email it. So you have to be careful with this option though, because this will launch your default email program. So if you're using Outlook on your desktop, you're fine because you'll left click on this. It'll just bring up Outlook. It'll have a little sentence in there with the link already. But if you use an email program on the web, maybe you use Gmail or Hotmail, just come back here and use the link, put that in your message and just write it out. So if you want to send it through email, you don't have to use this button. So that's mostly it for sending it out. I've left it on a boring theme, right? So we should touch on this quickly. If you want to send out to users and you want to make it look not lame, you can select one of these preset options or you can add your own. Okay. And last, I'm going to act like I'm one of the people that got this survey. So let's go to preview. We're going to see what happens and how it flows into the sheet. Of course, my service was great. And call me during the day and call me today. If I left click on submit, it says thanks. This is the response that you could have customized if you wanted to. And your user now is done with this form. So if we go back to Excel, let's see what that looked like. We'll go to survey results. And here it is already. It recorded the time that I did it. It had me as anonymous because I'm not in the same account. 
Uh, these are the fields that I filled out and it's nice and easy. So I'm going to put a few more in here and we're going to circle back in a second. Okay, I've gone back and I've put some responses in there so that we can see it. So let's go back to the Excel spreadsheet. And I wanted to show you what you can do. So if you just had a few options in here, nighttime, daytime, then you can filter and sort by this and have all the daytime people at the top, night at the bottom. But if you had just left that as an open text field, you would have four different responses. You could use this to collect hours for payroll from different employees, right? The survey could be when you start, when you stop, you send that to 100 employees and get it back in. It would be time stamps, so you would have some validation to it. Um, if you want to see how to treat that info when it comes in, I have a video here that you could watch. And that was basically all. So I hope that was helpful. If you like that and you want to see other videos like it, please subscribe in the lower right-hand corner. Thanks.